Oh, well, that doesn't smell great. Oh, that that doesn't you. smell good, Tom. That right. stinks, Tom. Squeaky chair could be a big, big issue because I won't stay still. The, the, do you want to swap chairs? No. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Tyler said, it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. My theory on referees is, you give them the nicest changing room in the stadium. It's just the most bizarre oh, thing right. I've ever heard. Hear me out, hear me out. I, I cannot believe Gabby had Bondo Hall's That's you crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded long intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with myself, Dan Bardell, and Tom Julian in his retro Villa shirt that still doesn't quite fit him. It's a bit. It's gone a bit the other way this this week. It's well, too big. I, I, first of all, thank you to Graham Owens who sent me this. Um, he saw my very tight shirt last <laughs> and week. It was tight. It was it was very tight. Needless to say, I haven't worn it again. And he reached out and said, "I've got this shirt, which is from the season afterwards. Um, would you like it?" Obviously, I was like. Yes, um, and it's beautiful. And I think it's the, I think it's the vintage baggy. You know how they used to wear it. Where, Ian Taylor baggy, I always call it. Yeah, it was like a, uh, there was no wind resistance. It was like you were wearing a parachute. Yeah, this is exactly how it feels. It feels nice around the neck, and I'm very, very delighted. So thank you, Graham. I really appreciate it. Very, very kind gesture. I've got a lovely story about that shirt. Yeah, it's a really boring story, but I'm going to tell it. Go on. I'm started now. Yeah. And people sometimes like to hear a boring story it's while they're tuning. Sure. You, you've made. And now I'm out of doing that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think that must have been the first year ever for some reason I didn't ask for a villa shirt for my birthday. So I must have just thought, oh, if I don't ask it, my dad will get me one anyway. And right. he did, and he didn't. So he didn't get one. So I didn't have that shirt. So I still had last season's shirt, but I wasn't happy going to Villa Park. Not in the current season shirt. Right. So one of my dad's friends said he knew the kit man and he'd get me a shirt. And I was like, oh, brilliant. I'm going to get, gonna get the shirt. He gave me like an extra large player shirt with 26 Petty on the back. Ben Petty, who had only ever played a game for the first team, but ended up coaching the Villa U team. He's at Leicester now. Wow. I think so. I had this massive parachute shirt that was too big for me with 26 Petty. I mean, the fact I've remembered Ben Petty's squad number is a disgrace. <laughs> 26 Petty on the back. I was going to say you remember 26. You remember Petty because you had that shirt. Did yeah. you ever wear it to the game? Now, you know what I used to do? Me and my mate used to play football in my bedroom with like a, a little ball. Yeah. And it was like the bed was the goal and the wall was yeah, the, the net. So, standard. you know, so you used to throw it against the wall and head it. And you'd, if you're in goal, you're trying to save it. And because it was so baggy. You should just make extra saves because it was so big. It used to get stuck in the shirt. Like if you put your arm out and you missed it, it would get stuck in the cr- in the crease. Maybe that's what we need to do now. Neil should have done that this season, <laughs> shouldn't it, he? Really, that would have helped. Very much could have helped. So yeah. we're uh, buried the lead a little bit. We're in the bad booth. It's worth mentioning. With we've started off the new year. Uh, hopefully not as we mean to go on. This is a bit of a disaster, but <laughs> maybe um, symbolic of Villa's performances of late. I'd describe it as a typical start to the new year from from the Villa view. Right. It's just typical. I was feeling good about doing the podcast tonight when we said when they said that we couldn't have the good booth. I thought, nah, it'll be fine. She won't be in there. Of course, she was in there. So we are in the bad booth. But I think the camera angle is quite favourable. It's probably a good job you're not wearing that tight shirt this week because yeah. it's a lot closer. That there will be. Um... I mean, it wouldn't be pleasant for anyone, would it? It wasn't pleasant for me. Right, let's sure. get on to the football, shall we? Because yeah. Villa, since we uh, since we last spoke, Dan, we've had two more games, uh, two more draws. Yep. And you were trying Checking to your maths, try, trying to work it out. So two points from six, one uh, a one-all draw against Preston, which we'll talk about first, and then the two-all draw against QPR. So let's get straight to it. Preston North End one, Aston Villa one. Two points dropped. I mean, I must say I haven't seen much of that game. I've only only seen the highlights. From, from what I heard, Preston dominated the first half and Villa came more into it mm. in the second half, but maybe a draw. For, I've seen, I saw. I think Ginger Luke said we, we deserve to win that game, but I saw a lot of people saying that we, that we didn't actually deserve to win the game, that a point wasn't a bad score considering how we played. Yeah. We just looked tired all through Christmas. I think we've not been at our best, and it has coincided with Jack not being in the team. But we've just not looked... Good. Yeah, Richard Griffiths. Um, hey, he went, didn't he? He went to the game, yeah, and he said that we were, we, I think he said that we were lucky or certainly fortune favoured us at times. Obviously, um, there's the, we had the chances right at the end, Bianis and putting it over the bar. Um, he was offside anyway, though, wasn't he? 
so James Rushton said this, but I can't I, trust him. I'm sure he ran from from quite deep to maybe someone else was offside and went for the ball. Which Tammy maybe they were offside. May, may have been offside, and he was right behind Bjarnason. So there's a potential there. I'm not sure. Anyway. Either way, you've got to put that in the back of the net, whether you know you're offside or not. You've For got to sure. stick that away. For sure. Um, so, and and there's a little bit of um, a few Villa fans saying that we didn't give Preston enough credit. Um, you and I talked about it before and talked about Alex Neil, how he's done a good job at Preston, and they played really nice football. I thought I thought they played nice through balls. They were looking on the attack. Barkusen had a couple of couple of moments. I thought Nealon played well. Actually, from from what I saw, I'm the same as you. Yeah, made a good save. Uh, only only kind of catching up with the with the best bits. But it's another two point drop where there were some funny results in in the championship yet again. Leeds actually fell off a little bit this week, and yep. and yet we haven't capitalised. Yeah, we're not making up any ground or any serious ground, are we? It's been quite a stale Christmas period. I, I would say, and I'm sure we'll come on to obviously the QPR game is more recently, so we'll, we'll come on to that. That's fresher. In my mind, but the, I think the Preston fan on the um, EFL football show on Sky Sports afterwards said he thinks they're in a false position. He thinks they've been better right. than their position is. I think they were seventeenth or something at the time. We we played them. I always think they're a decent side. Preston. They've got some good little little players. As I said in the last podcast, they pick people up for cheap. Yeah, they maximise their ability. They usually sell them on for for a profit. So it's, it's strange because we've been better away than we have been at home. So. If anything, I'd have expected us to go there and win rather than win yesterday. But we're just not really in good form, are we? No, we're not. It's it's, it's a weird time, I think, to be a Villa fan right now because the hype around Smith has kind of died down a little bit. <laughs> now Villa fans, as as they want to do on Twitter, are, are now arguing with each other. There seems to be a lot of people kind of saying, we need to calm down, and not that, oh, yeah. not that many people, I don't think, throw in the throwing the baby out with the bathwater right now. I, don't... I mean, I've got no idea what that means. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, how do I react to that? Because well, I don't so, know what he's going on about. So a lot of people saying, oh, we all need to calm down, all this kind of stuff. I don't actually think there's that many people kicking off say, being that outraged or being that kind of negative right now. Or do you see a different side of it? I mean, Villa fans in general have a tendency to overreact. Yeah. I think. I've not seen too much. I see the odd stupid thing. I mean, without trying to alienate people who watch our stuff, I've seen a few YouTube comments on our video saying Smith out, but I just I just think that must be a Birmingham City fan. Yeah. Or a Wolves fan. Yeah. They seem to like our channel for some reason and commenting on Villa. Yeah, but like you say, stale seems to be the right word. We've kind of dropped points and... But the football's been good up until the it last. Wasn't, it couple, wasn't yesterday. I, I was going to say up until the last couple of games. You know, football. Even the Leeds game was was entertaining. Yeah. Um, uh, what else have we had over Christmas? Swansea away. Second half was good. Swansea. Uh, yeah. So like we've we've had good football and it's been exciting. I think there was a guy on fan cams yesterday who said that you you get the attacking football with Smith. That's that's what you pay for. That's what we asked for. And it's not always going to be clean and tidy at the back. And now we seem to be a bit annoyed that we've got that. You know, like there, yeah, it's there just case. seems to be a never, never happy kind yeah, of. Yeah, and, and, and again, I'm obviously a Villa fan myself, but it's, a, it's always been a bit like that mm. as as fans. I think we have, we feel like we've got this sense of entitlement a little bit because we are a big club and historically we've been very good, but we are where we are. And people wanted rid of Bruce because they didn't like his football. And last season he got results yeah. in the main, but people still didn't like his football. The football has improved tenfold, especially from where it was under Bruce this season, because yeah. it was horrific. I mean, that trip we had to Sheffield United was some of the worst, turgid, just unambitious, no clue football I've ever seen it in my life. So the football has improved tenfold, and I still think the strides we've made under Smith are big. We've just hit a bit of a rocky patch at the moment. There's no need to panic. Mm. If we don't go up this season, we don't go up this season. If we don't go up, it'll be because we're not ready. Yeah. So I don't think there's any need to panic over that. Obviously, I want us to go up, but. There's some sustainability there now. There's a, there's a plan. There's the right people in jobs throughout the club now. I just I just think we're having a bad run as most teams do. And, just, and at some point we were going to have a bad run under Smith. He hit the ground. Obviously after we won his first game, then we lost to. But after that, really, he hit the ground running, didn't he? We were we had some very good results. And we were playing some really nice stuff. I just feel in the last last few weeks, for whatever reason, we've gone a bit backwards. We've kind of reverted to type and I know that's not how Smith is sending them out because he has his way mm. and that's how he wants us to be but sometimes with players it's difficult to get rid of bad habits and I just think maybe a few bad habits have started to creep in again from the Bruce time yeah it's 
Yeah, I think you're right, and especially around Christmas where there's so many games, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty relentless stuff. Dean Smith said it himself, I think he said Hurahan and McGinn in particular look dead on their feet. McGinn's looked like that for a few weeks, so I think he's still running his socks off and trying his best, but he's knackered. And you can only do that for so long, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, it wouldn't be a total surprise if we see the FA Cup, a completely different team. I hope so. Fresh legs, and just give everybody that needs it that, that five days off or whatever. It doesn't help that we have had injuries leading up to the Christmas period as well. So, for example, someone like Lansbury, mm. he would have come in at some point over this Christmas period, but it just hasn't been able to happen mm. because it, because he's injured. Obviously, we've lost Jack. That everyone knows that's a massive miss. Smith said so himself that if you lose your best player, yeah, it'd be a problem for best any side. In the championship, he said. That's what he said, yeah, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Then it's a problem. We've had injuries to the back line that have meant it's just been a mishmash of players anyway again there's not really been any way that he could have freshened that up he's called Elphick back at the earliest opportunity and he's come in yes yeah, so I think there's there's factors as to why this we're on a bit of a bad run but I, I, we'll come out of it I'm sure we'll come out of it I'm still I still think we'll get top six which I think if you'd have been offered that when Smith came in most people would have probably taken it I, would, I would certainly would have taken it going back to the Preston game shortly there was a point uh, it was nil nil. I don't know if you saw this where El Ghazi had a had a had a chance he got through Tammy Abraham's clear through in the box and El Ghazi blazes it over the bar as, yeah. and Tammy Abraham goes absolutely mental at him I, I saw it a couple of times it happened in the QPR game Abraham he went mental at Codri yesterday as just, well exactly just chomping at the bit to get more goals obviously he's in such good form 16 goals already um, we'll come on to Tammy Abraham in much much more detail but nice to see your centre forward like that but is that necessarily good for morale or good for you know team spirit, that kind of thing? I just think with Abraham, he's quite a natural leader. I didn't realise that about him until I've watched him play for Villa. That, sure. For someone so young, he's very vocal, he's very very confident. I think he's a good leader. Mm. Tell me, I think if someone makes a bad decision, yeah, there's always element of you want to encourage people, but sometimes people need telling off. I've good sometimes, rollicking. Yeah, I, I nearly swore. Sometimes people need to be said, you've done that wrong. <laughs> and I've got to say, the last... I've got to say, even yesterday, some of the decision making. Mm. Balassi's had a, had a couple recently where he's just got to square it and he's tried to shoot. I mean, he tried to shoot yesterday and he went out for a throw in. Mm. When there was players actually getting into the box for what it felt like the first time in that game, I know we'll come on to QPR. But I do think decision making's been one of our main issues over Christmas. Yeah, it's. <sighs> Really itchy nose. Now, I've got. Really, I, I think really if it's this booth. I can't decide whether you're itching your nose and then that's it, me uh, psychologically really doing there. it, or whether it's just a cursed booth. It's St Andrew's booth. Yeah. It's got the plague in here. It's Allergic really, to it. Oh, really itchy nose. <laughs> so Tammy Abraham scored the goal um, against Preston. Uh, does really well, I think, to beat his man. I think there's a couple of Preston guys picking him up, and he just kind of. It feels like the Preston guy's kind of all over him. He just drops back. Preston guy falls over, and he. Gets home, nods in. Lovely delivery from Glenn Whaler. It was the set it? piece king. It's, so where's Glenn Whelan come from with these set pieces? It doesn't feel like he. It should be a natural corner taker. Your defensive midfielder. Smith, I've noticed Smith seems to like from the left hand side. He wants a right footer delivering it because Bjarnason was taking him from that side. Yeah. yeah. So he obviously just wants a right footer, which makes sense. With I've always thought an in swinger is better than a an out swinger. Yeah. From a corner, and then obviously Horahan or McGinn usually takes it. On the other side, depending who's playing. So, yeah, Whelan, a natural fit under those circumstances. Although maybe you'd think Balassi on the wing, or was it Balassi and Al Ghazi that game against Preston? You'd think they might take it. Yeah. But obviously, Whelan's. It just doesn't strike me as a defensive centre midfielder's job to take corners. But if you're good at it. Perlow was quite a deep lying midfielder, wasn't he? I mean, I'm not for one minute saying Glenn Whelan's Andrea (laughs) Perlow. It's a big comparison. But Perlow used to take set pieces, obviously, and he was a deep lying midfielder. I think we've got a different style of player to Glenn Whelan, but deep nonetheless. We've got the podcast title, haven't we, there? Whelan equals Perlow, yeah. Um, They get the the equaliser, El Mohamedy own goal. Not a huge amount El Mohamedy could have done. With it, I don't no, think he's had a torrid winter. He has, isn't he? Really, really torrid. I was glad to see him get taken out the firing line yesterday. To be fair, in, in general, he's been pretty consistent since he's been in the club. But he's just had, since I, I feel like it was since I said something about him in the podcast, he's gone to pieces. Well, since they made the Oasis "She's Electric" chant about El Mahamedi, I mean, I've not heard that sound. I know, no, I know. You, you, yeah, it's not been sung at Villa Park. Yeah, it's a shame that because I was saying to you, well, it's not been of, electric, mate. So you can't really be singing it, can well, you? <laughs> I was saying to you a couple of weeks ago, I love this song. And since that, since then, he's been absolutely woeful. So um, 
I feel for I, always, you know. I feel for fullbacks at the moment. All our fullbacks seem to be getting rinsed. Hutton got rinsed yesterday. He had a torrid time. It just seems to keep keep happening. Hutton seems to be going back to the punching bag now, doesn't he? Like in terms of he has. Oh, he's had, still very well loved. He's had this golden period though, where he could do no wrong after the Birmingham game, and, yeah. and, and I mean rightly or wrongly, but there's been a couple of high-profile mistakes and I said it last week I think there was a I thought he was out of position a couple of times and we, we've talked about him going back to left back and how that hasn't really suited him and since he's gone back to left back it, we just haven't had that flow I do think people are overlooking the fact that it's a different style of football and what obviously it was a point I made so I said this last week I obviously think it's a good point because I made it but under Bruce, it worked because it, one, he had John Terry next to him, and two, it was not expansive football. Now he's been encouraged to, to bomb on even more so than he was last season, and he's going to get caught out of position, but it, it does seem to be happening a little bit too much at the moment. But he was playing better as a right back. Yeah, he's, I mean, just for example, both the goals he scored this season have come in games when he was playing right back. Hmm. It's not. I've said I don't want to hammer someone who's playing out of position because they, this really shouldn't be happening, but it's because of the previous manager that we're having to do it. It's the same for Hutton. I just think it, it's not his position. It, maybe he's tired as well. I mean, he's 33 years of age, is he, Hutton? Yeah, I think so. Same age as me. He's played a lot of games. Like, and no one, We've had no one to come in and replace him because of injuries. Maybe he's taken out for, for, of the firing line. If you had a straight choice, right back, left back's covered, we've, we've got Maldini in. <laughs> Who would you play, Bree or Hutton? At the moment, Bree. Or El Mahamadi. At the moment, in general, I would have always picked Al Mohamedy because I think he's better going forward, which is obviously what I want to encourage. But mm. Hutton at right back hasn't been a problem this season. Hutton at left back has, so I'd probably pick Hutton. Interesting. Even though Bree's the younger, you could you can kind of blood him in a little bit more. I'm, inter- I'm, I'm I think surprised Bree's, by your choice. I think Bree. When, when Dean Smith came in, I was certain that Bree would be straight in the team because I thought he was this attacking, adventurous f- fullback that bombed on mm. yesterday. I've seen a few people saying he played well, and to be honest, he didn't do anything wrong. I didn't think anyone had a good game yesterday, but Bray did nothing wrong. Although I do think he, I do actually think he could have done better for the first goal. So saying that he has done something. No, the second, the second, second goal, one. I felt like he should have brought the man down, and I felt like he was slow to react to what what was potentially unraveling. What so far up the pitch? I just think he could have took the man out yeah. before the move developed. Experience to me, he's that. not he's not playing with the freedom I'd like him to. And I, and again, I know Dean Smith wants players to play with freedom I wanted to see him bomb on a bit more yesterday and he he didn't do he wasn't doing it he was playing it a bit safe in my opinion mm. yesterday he was solid enough apart from that that passage of play for the goal but I just, I just want to see a bit more from him well before we move on totally to QPR because we got to drift in that yeah, way I've forgotten everything about Preston <laughs> yeah well this is the just the last thing obviously the Bjarnason miss right at the end was the one that grabbed all of the gifts and and, and whatnot. Uh, but I, I just wanted to shout out to their goalkeeper Rudd, who made an excellent save from Bjarnason right at the end. He I don't think I've seen that. Bjarnason puts it in from from outside the box, and Rudd he, he he parries it, but parries it so hard and so far away that Tammy Abraham, who's just lurking there, it's just out of his reach. And again, Tammy Abraham goes nuts because you can see like that was there on a plate for him to finish. Really good bit of goalkeeping. I've seen a video of him making a howler recently, so it, it fits in that when he's playing against Villa, of course, he makes a good save. Sure. I'm sure I saw a video of him doing something stupid. I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top no, of my head. No. Former Norwich man, Declan Rudd. Like Jed Steer. Former Norwich Academy goalkeeper. Is he? Yeah. Well, there you go. Bit of tidbit for you. I thought you might be getting confused with John Ruddy. No, no, John Ruddy was there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Ruddy, former Cambridge um, man. Yeah, I, I was start, you know, I started to think that Declan Rudd might be form, former Cambridge, no. and then I realised that he was Norwich. Good, good knowledge. Came, shout out for the Cambridge Mafia. Yeah, lost six nil uh, on oh, New Year's Colin Day. Calderwood. He had a stinker after, <laughs> oh, you big, after you bigged him up. And then, like, so they won that that the shout out to Colin Calderwood, and then they won their first game, and then went one nil up on New Year's Eve or twenty seventh, something like that, and uh, lost two one. Who did they lose six nil to? MK Dons. Tough place to go. I presume they were away. Yeah, they were yeah, away. It's a tough place to go, Stadium MK. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the point. That's what the reason why we're all here, Aston Villa 2, QPR 2. What did you make of it? You were there? I didn't like it. I'm trying to adjust my chair. <laughs> I definitely I just did I, I didn't like it. Oh, it doesn't move. No oh dear. <laughs> In fact I've got lower <laughs> down. Why did you wait to do that before you'd ask me a question? Surely you should have done that before you I asked me the question. Could, I thought you could distract people. I was trying to bring you in a bit more, I was just saying I didn't like it. I don't know whether whether you watched it. Yeah, I, did, yeah. I mean, it feels like the kind of thing we should have discussed before the podcast started. Can you stop fiddling with that chair? Sorry, right, I'm done. Just, I've got, I've got lower and lower. You've got through 
18 odd minutes sat in that position. You don't need to change it. I'm no. really uncomfortable. You see, this chair is so far back, it's like a sun, sun lounger. And if I, if I actually sat back a bit like this. Oh, yeah, well, I've got a squeaky chair, but oof. <laughs> I, mean, I should have done that. Right, get back to it. You, right, uh, I watched the bad game. Bad presenting from you, that watched, is. <laughs> watched the game. I thought you'd cover for me. I'm no, not going to lie to you. I didn't. I watched the game, but I wanted to get your impression because Villa Mad is, is one of the guys that got involved. Sir Villa Mad, I should say. I think he gave he him some New Year's honours. Villa Mad um, OBA. Yeah. He, um, he said that the atmosphere was totally flat, even though there was a, a, an abundance of fireworks. I'd go as far as to say it wasn't even flat. It just wasn't an atmosphere. Yeah. Why, why is that? I don't know. I mean, I've got to be honest, I was a little bit hungover, so I wasn't my usual jovial self. I wasn't, right. I wasn't singing along with, with all the chants because I was quite tired and, and hungover, so maybe there was an air of that around Villa Park. I think we were probably waiting to be entertained a little bit. There was a brief flurry when we went 1-0 up, as obviously there always would be, but the game, we just weren't there. I don't mm. think we did anything well. We started off the brighter, I think. Like We, we took it to QPR, yeah. as the home team should. I don't think that's... I think. It's not a given, but but you should be doing that as the first team. Like Chester had that chance, I think Abraham had a chance where he got through, but keeper made a, a smartish save. Um, I th- yeah, I thought Villa looked bright, and obviously McGinn absolutely rattled the bar. That he was just that quite a lot. That was hit a the woodwork. lovely effort. Sometimes they look better when they hit the woodwork. Don't I mean, they? we prefer it if they go into. Yeah, well, to be I mean, sure, but it, it looked great. And then obviously he creates the the cross for the goal, which again is a beautifully weighted ball. Put a lot of we do put a lot of crosses in. I remember reading something the last year or the year before on in four four two magazine where it said crossing was like a dying art. No team score off crosses anymore. We seem to score loads off crosses. Would you say that was a cross? I feel like it was a lobbed kind of pass. Oh, was, that's a cross. It, it wasn't on the wing. It's still a cross. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it goes more forward than a cross to me. But he heads it in, so to me that's. But a cross. he glances, doesn't he? It's, it's, a, it's a lovely. He's actually, got, he's actually got more to do there than, than I think is first apparent. I totally agree. Because it comes, the QPR man jumps and ju- literally just misses it, so it comes at, at Tammy quickly and yeah. he manages to head it down, which is what you're always taught yeah. to do. Lovely impression there, <laughs> which, you, which, you, which you're always taught to do. So it's a good header. Both his finishes were harder than they looked. I think. Yes, I I would agree. I thought there was a. You definitely wouldn't have took them away. Oh, in your prime, even I, I don't know. I was a, a bit of a heading connoisseur. Were well, yeah. you? You're yeah. not particularly tall, though. No, I know, but I. I you made don't up tell me for Abraham. No, no, no. In any, any. Stretch. No, there's nothing about you that screams. <laughs> um, let's get back to it. Luke Freeman equalises with a with a spectacular goal of his own. I was warned about him by our friend Dean Spencer. He did. He said Luke Freeman's a player. Uh, he he looked quite smart early on and made a few made a few things happen. I and then, he was at Stevenish not that long ago. Really? Yeah. But well, you've started at Arsenal. Villa gave him way too much room and way too much respect. I thought. Shouldn't, oh, shouldn't he be lack the guy? Of intensity. Well, John McGinn should be kind of on him all the time. He was their guy that was making things happen, didn't he? He was on the wing, though, so he's playing on, on the wing, so not technically but, McGinn's man, technically. I didn't really feel like Freeman played anyway, he just did what he wanted. But he was playing, I believe he was playing right midfield. But I saw him all over the place. Yeah, just, maybe just I've got that wrong. Things happen. I, felt, I thought he was playing on the right, Ezzy on the left, and Wells up front, and Dean Spencer had warned me about that front three. He said they were all on, on really good form. Well, that Ezzy should have scored a volley early yeah, on in done. that game as well. He, he always plays well against smart. us. He ran it at Villa Park last year as well. He looked sharp. He took his goal well, yeah. the second goal. Keep it, I took both their goals well, Yeah, I must say. They're a decent sort. They're obviously a decent sort because they're sitting in the playoff picture. They're ahead of us. Mm. Aren't they? They, but it was a big game for both teams, and QPR will be happy with a draw. Um, I said, I don't get that. Why were they happy with the draw? They come into Villa Park, they're two one up. They pl- when they come forward, they look like they're going to cause us problems. Have some ambition. Try and win the game. Yeah. Once it got to two two, they just thought, right, that's good enough for us. I shouldn't be. Well, even before what? that, because the the Lumley thing, which obviously took a very very long time, that was a was that a one all. Uh, yeah, because they literally scored or within five minutes after that stoppage. It was like we just weren't concentrating. And again, concentration seems to be a problem mm. at the moment. There's a few issues around us at the moment. There's, you're saying for that first goal, Freeman had all the time in the world. I felt there was a lack of intensity in everything that we did. El Ghazi, to be fair to him, when he came on, he, I think he possessed the correct amount of intensity. Mm. But we just looked slop, sloppy, like not quick to realise danger, and that's what I'm saying about Bree for the second goal. Just bring the man down, take a booking. Yeah, I might be mistaken. That Luke Freeman goal, I feel like it came from we had a free kick, and Bjarnason was so eager to take it quickly that he kind of just... Because a guy stood in front of it or whatever, he kind of made a, made a rush of, of doing it and ended up going back to back to QPR and then there was a few moves in between that but again 
that's kind of the opposite side of intensity, isn't it? Yeah. Where we're, we're trying to get the ball playing more quickly, but we're not. Do, do you know what I mean? That that we could just slowed it down there. At the time, I felt like I could run out of the hole and enter the lower hole and get myself onto the pitch, and he still wouldn't have had the shot. He had that much time. Yeah, I felt like he felt like he had the ball for ages. I've not really seen it. I've seen it back once, so I can't. I didn't. I should have analysed it more than I did. Mm. I just felt like he had too much time to shoot. It's a good. Don't get me wrong. It's a lovely strike. It's a great strike. If, if one of our players had scored it, I'd be sitting here going, "Ah, oh, what a player! What a great strike!" But be a bit quicker. Mm. I didn't feel anything was quick yesterday. And if if it was quick, it was at the wrong time. Yeah. Well, that yeah. That's you put that so much more eloquently than I tried. It's a surprise because I've got to be honest. Like Michael Scott says on the US office, I had no idea where where I was going with what I was saying there. It just came out. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, Abraham arguing with Joe Lumley. What did you make of the whole Lumley situation? Um, obviously, Joe Lumley, the goalkeeper for QPR, um, gets a gets a knock to his face. To be fair, yeah. and I think there's a picture of him oh, bleeding from the nose. I just should not have done that. Yeah, it was quite. I thought he was a bit lucky to get away with it. Did he get booked? He got booked, but yeah. <laughs> he got like, lied down in injured. Yeah, God, he did. God, yeah. He just kicked someone in the face. Yeah. Surely his face isn't that hard. <laughs> he got hurt your foot, has he? And then, but did you think? What what did you make of Lumley? Because I know you tweeted about him taking an age doing other things. I mean, I felt like he did the same thing at Loftus Road. So mm. before the game even started, I saw him and thought, oh, I remember you, I don't like you. Mm. He looks like a weird Peter Crouch, Lumley. There's something about him I don't like. And I really like Peter Crouch. He looks like Peter Crouch when Peter Crouch started out. There's just something about him I don't like. It doesn't fit. Yeah, he just doesn't look like a foot. I know he's a goalkeeper. He doesn't look like a footballer particularly. Peter Crouch expecting his fourth... Child, so congratulations, yeah, yeah. Peter. Well done, Peter. I'm sure he watches. Yeah, <laughs> and I, uh, I've I investigated Lumley a little bit earlier, and, and this isn't a really big thing, but it's I've got more Twitter followers than him. Oh, he's not even got a blue tick. Wow, so just, something about Lumley that's off. Does he tweet? He does a bit. Oh, right. There's something about him that's off. I managed to find a gif of him, which was amazed yes, me. I saw that. Yeah, I've just not, something about him I'm not sure about. I feel like he shouldn't be a footballer, but he is. Mm. I, I didn't really see, I've not really seen him make a save in either game either, really. We put on a, quite a lot of pressure in Loftus Road, which obviously just didn't hit the target. But in two games, I don't feel like I've made seen him make a save. Yeah, interesting. He made that save early against Tammy Abraham, just to nullify that point. All right, well, thanks. For that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're, you're right. It, that wasn't the most testing. Didn't have much think. to do. He, a good he saved save it with then. his legs, I think. A good save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Um, but the, the whole thing was just a farce. There must be some kind of rule about how long someone can get treatment for. I know it's the goalkeeper, so that might perhaps negates that that rule a little bit. But like the physio has walked off. And then he just decided to come back on and then touch him up mm. again. It, it was just a, a bit weird. Yeah, it's tough for the goalkeeper, I think, because there's literally nothing you can do, especially if he's bleeding. Yeah, I mean, it's a bad, you, you it was a bad challenge. Kodja was out of order. It's a, it's a, it's a bad challenge. I don't, I don't think he was ever going to get there. Was it up your end or the other Yeah, end? yeah, whole end. So yeah. I don't think he was ever going to get there, really, Kodja. So it, I was... The way the ref... Oh, I'll come on to the ref, Jesus Christ. But the way he pulled the rec, the way he pulled the yellow card out, he actually looked like he was going to pull a red out. It was so dramatic. Really? The way the referee did it, he was an absolute idiot. We should talk about the referee now. I mean, I hadn't finished making the point I was making, oh, but now I've, now I've forgotten. What well, was so, it about the ref? You were literally yeah, talking about the no, ref. No, but I was, he was coming back towards Lumler. Oh, right, OK. I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Doesn't look like a footballer. Less yeah. followers than you. I mean, I hope Surely Lumley, you've got nothing I else. I hope Lumley doesn't watch the podcast. And I hope he never signs for Villa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be in trouble. Well, seeing as you've forgotten your point, yeah. talk to me a little bit more about the ref. What did, because everybody was frustrated with this guy. I wish I knew his name. Someone did tweet me his name. I saw, I saw a Leeds fan have commented on Leeds. Seems to like our channel all of a sudden since our game. Thank you for Leeds yeah. followers. They commented saying this, that QPR did the same. I oh, know that's to do with Lumley again. <laughs> I've gone. <laughs> head loss. My, Does this boot my head, really affect My head you? has gone. Yeah, the Leeds fans basically were saying that Lumley did the same thing at Ellen Road. I've seen something somewhere about this about this referee. It was just an ambassador for bad refereeing. Right. He was terrible. He made it all about him. He was seen to have this weird thing where you could only take a quick free kick if it suited him. If he didn't want you to take a, a quick free kick, he'd pull it back for no reason. Mm. QPR did one and he let that go. And then we did it, and he was like, no, 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 Villa. You, you can't do that. They were busy celebrating Freeman's goal. So Freeman scored in front of the whole end, then ran all the way up to the QPR fans in the uh, in the Doug Ellis. So all their players are in their own half. We try and kick off, which is within the rules. He just, he just wouldn't have it. Pull, pulled it back. We were trying to build an attack to take advantage of their players all... Not if they're all off the pitch, though. They were on. I'm sure they were all on the pitch by this point. They were still busy congratulating each other. Mm. It, just, it was just terrible. Everything seemed to be a drama. Mm. It's a matter of, like, usually, like, 
Someone tried to throw him from the wrong place. The referee might let it go a few times. He literally let nothing go. Yeah. He was, he was awful. Well, so, he was the worst ref I've seen. Really? Yeah, def- I know it's a, quite a dramatic thing to say, and probably I've said it before, but he really was I'd a turd. He was turd. <laughs> Some refs like to make it about them, don't they? I mean, you're a trained referee, so you, you can tell me, when you were a referee, did you like to make it? No, I like to play play on wherever yeah. I could. This, this ref is... did not like that. And it didn't... I'm not using it as an excuse to why we didn't win the game, mm. but it didn't help. It certainly didn't help. The players were getting wound up by him as well. The amount of times QPR players went down, he just had no authority. Like QPR took the mick out of that ref yesterday, Yeah, I would say. He didn't put Lumley till about the 92nd minute when, for time-wasting. The guy was time-wasting in the first half. But if you, I then think it shows real weakness of character of a referee if you, if you leave it that long to book someone for time-wasting. And even after he booked him, he spent about another 10 minutes doing his laces up, checking the advertising, hoarding for advertising, the right thing, playing with his touched-up nose because he was injured. He was just, the ref, unbelievably bad. Unbelievably bad. It's Yeah, it's a tough job, and sometimes referees get it We obviously didn't wrong. give him the best change in, right? No, well, that's we what I was going to come on to. We absolutely can't have done. I mean, it's become folklore now. That flawless point that you made <laughs> that had 100% correct basis on it. I think it does. Yeah, well, we obviously didn't do well, it. We need to talk to the team at Villa and make sure that we sort out the changing room situations. We didn't abide by the Julian handbook. That's it. It's very important. And I just don't understand why you wouldn't do it. But anyway, we're not <laughs> going to get back onto it. Um... If you haven't seen them, Villa View did fan cams after the game, so make sure you check them out. Strong fan cams. Some new uh, faces. I think there was a few comments on Twitter, wasn't there, saying that we needed some new people to to come on fan cams. It's difficult. Well, I was going to say... I'm not sure what encouraged these new people to come, by the way. It was random that we just suddenly had an influx of new people. Also, if you don't ever go on fan cams, but you want new people on there, go on there. That's literally the only way that new people go on, is if if you are the new person. I meant to put a tweet out before the game, but completely forgot. But by the new people, it was almost like I had put the tweet out, even though I didn't. Good job, mate. I don't get given many jobs to do. Like, no, you really don't. I was one of them, and I failed to do it. Yeah, it's tough. Um, but a lot of criticism of Alan Hutton on the on the fan cams. And There's a lot of criticism for a lot of players, to be fair. And I think, judging by yesterday, as I said, I don't think anyone played well. Yeah. Even Tammy, I feel like Tammy only touched the ball twice. And that's not his fault. But it felt like he only touched the ball twice, and he, sc- he scored. Yeah, it's just good for him. Yeah. Um, finishes. One guy was talking about the the... The loss of Axel Twanzebi and not bringing bang on point that was not bringing the ball out from the back and and playing out from the back. It, um, it felt like we've we've kind of missed that a little bit and that kind of anchor that becomes uh, the the defensive player that becomes part of the midfield. Really good point. That was a really good point. Yeah. It was something I completely overlooked actually. I didn't yeah. even think about it. As obviously I knew we missed him because he's a good defender. Yeah. But yeah, he was the one starting the attacks. I actually think. And people are hammering me for this probably. I actually think we missed Nealand's quick distribution yesterday as well. His distrib- Steers, there was nothing wrong with Steers' distribution really, but I just I think Nealand's distribution gets overlooked. I think his throwouts are very, very good. So Nealand uh, ruptures Achilles tendon. Horrible, horrible injury out for the season now. Yeah. And Good job we did get a new keeper in. Well, yeah, true. Um, what, did you, what did you make of Jed Steer? I actually quite like Jed Steer. I think he's a very, very good shot stopper. He didn't, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't think he could have done anything about either goal. And he actually nearly got the, the second goal, didn't he? He got, mm. he got a hand on it. Yeah, I like him. I don't think it says much for Mark Burn <laughs> that we've instantly called Jed Steer back just for one game, basically. Does But if I was Bunn, I wouldn't be very happy. Well, does Jed Steer now become the number two, do you think? Well, yeah, definitely. But that's no good for his development. No, he's no. At, he's out of contract in the summer. So is Bunn, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've remembered what my point was about uh, you the, are the kidding, QPR mate. Lumley now. Yeah, it was a similar kind of point that it didn't say much for their sub goalkeeper that they were so desperate to patch uh, Lumley up because straight away the a few of the QPR players looked at the bench and went, "No, he's finished. Really, blood. Yeah, he's done." And they obviously were so desperate not to bring the sub keeper on. Wow. But yeah, Bun's a similar thing, isn't it? It's like it's almost like we're so desperate not to play him. We called Jed Steer back for one game. Yeah. I'd... And Bun's been sat on the bench all season. So is there a possibility that Jed Steer goes out on loan again? Or no, we're talking about this two-team Yeah, yeah, he's, issue he's, he's done now. He'd only be able to go back to Charlton, I believe. Right. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah. It's, I mean, I presume they talk to the players over these things and gauge what the players want. Because Tommy Elphick said he wanted to come back. He wanted to come and play under, under Dean Smith. He's been a fan of Dean Smith. So you presume Steer knows the situation. At the end of the day, he's contracted to Aston Villa Football Club. We're paying his wages. Yeah, well, uh, Smith said 
Uh, what did Dean Smith say? He said he looked very assured and, and he is a good goalkeeper. I'm happy to have him back in the building. Um, we've brought him back to be um, our goalkeeper with us. He's come in and done well. It's kind of non-committal. And like you say, when you when you pay that much for Kalinic... Yeah, he's Kalinic not going to be number one, is he? He's number two. He's younger than Mark Bunn. There's more future for Jed Steer than there is f- for Mark Bunn. But not if he's been playing with Charlton and then he comes back and he's out yeah. of contract is, it's Jed, a weird one. is Jed Steer going to want to stay at Villa because he's not been treated the best yeah, just, he's really trying, mugged off by Steve Bruce that's the problem he's mugged off by Steve Bruce he's not been mugged off by Dean Smith well, it's not Dean Smith's fault though, is it because really? he's been playing at Charlton he comes back for one game like you say and now he's going to have to sit on the bench so I mean I know that that's that, better for Villa if Jed I, Steer's a better goalkeeper than Mark Bunn let's say I know that that's best for Villa but in terms of the future of Jed Steer Jed Steer's going to go well I was surplus to requirement oh I, I'm needed now and now I'm surplus to requirement maybe Jed Steer fancies himself and thinks I can keep this Kalinic out the side. I hope he does. I mean, I'm sure I don't know whether that is the case, obviously, but... But you, you've got, as a professional sports person, you've got to think that you can beat anybody that's in front of you. Otherwise, you'd never get out of bed. I mean, yeah, I can Or you're Michael Richards. I mean, I'll come in here and I think, I'm better than Tom. <laughs> I'm going to perform better than Tom today. And listen, one day you will be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Uh, yeah, anyways... Not, not as good at you as notes. And that's no, true. Well, look at these notes, by the way. I've got pages. An anthology of, of notes. I've got reams and reams. <laughs> what have you been doing? Have you done any work today? Uh, yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. sure? If my boss is listening. Yeah. Yes, I have. Um, anyway, Jed Steer out contracting the summer. be interesting to see how he really feels. Um, Tommy Elphick also came back. What did you make of Tommy? Again, I've said it about a player last night. I didn't really notice him. Bree, I think it's a nice he, he made a good. He made a good block in the first half. Yeah. It's nice to have him back because he's an organiser. He's a vocal presence and something that's not very frequent at Villa Park. He is a centre half. Yeah, that's nice. So, so, so that's nice. But yeah, I, now that guy's made the point about Axel Tranzabi, what, what you feel like one of Chester or Elphick should be bringing the ball out a little bit more. But this is what annoys me with Villa fans. Right? We say we want this nice football. When the players start passing it around the back and trying to play out from the back, mm. the f- crowd gets really antsy. You can't ask for something, and then when a manager implements what you've been asking for, get antsy about it. Yeah. Because I always think they look quite comfortable with it, but it's almost like the fans make it more of a drama than it actually is. So Chester and Elphick and the goalkeeper stay would, would did it a bit yesterday. They were completely in control of what they were doing. But the whole tent, oh, what's this? That's not a hoof into Rose Ed. They don't, they don't like it. I don't get why people have wanted the change and then when positive things are, are implemented the way football should be played, they get answer. I feel like, and this is going to be a hypocritical thing to say because we're a Villa podcast and we're a, we're a Villa channel. And, but yeah. the, the, the It's so- not everyone, it's not everyone, is it? No, but the social media and the 24-hour news, sports news, where you have to have a story and you have to talk about someone and you have to do this and that and you have to keep producing content, essentially, means that people are criticised for things that they wouldn't have been criticised back, yeah, back in that. the day. And so there's so much emphasis and so much focus on nitpicking that we get to the point where we're just destroying things before we've had a, a, a chance to let them breathe. So the whole Smith system, everybody said at the start of the Smith's era give him time give him January because he needs to sort himself out and then let him, let's see where we are at the he end of the season he started too well but now everybody is like oh but we haven't done this we haven't done this it's still January it's the start of January we haven't had the chance to Smith hasn't had his own players he hasn't got his own system in the coaches have only been there for a, a number of weeks still we we need to let it breathe it's because we've been in the championship for this is the third season so people are people are antsy about that when we were top six people in the Premier League, people weren't happy. Mm. And there's people who do think that Villa should have a divine right to be to be in that top top six in the Premier League. And the fact is, we don't. We're where we are for a reason. It's not Smith's fault we're in the, in the Championship. It's not Smith's fault that Bruce tried to destroy our, our, our squad yeah. in in the summer, is it? So, I don't know. I just think there needs to be some sensibility mm. at some point. And in general, there's way more sensible people than people who are OTT in the in the Villa fan base. It just always seems to be the ones that are OTT that are the most vocal. We've had a lot of questions on the midfield three from yesterday. You said yourself you thought they were under par. Generally it didn't work. Unit. It just uh, didn't work. And why was that? What, I what don't was know. missing? Well, Jack Grealish is missing. Yeah, he's the fair. one that he's the one that carries carries the ball. I've seen a few people say, "Oh, why didn't Horahan and Bjarnason carry the ball? Carry the ball forward in certain games?" It's it's not really their, it's not their, their trait. It's not, not what they do. 
Well, Matt Collins said, would it, um, the midfield three isn't working for me. Surely a case to try a proper number 10, e.g. El Ghazi, Lansbury or O'Hare? It's not... I don't Jamie think... Richards also yeah. says the same. I mean, I was a bit perplexed in stoppage time yesterday when I, Glenn Whelan came on when we need a goal. Mm. Glenn Whelan for Horahan seemed a strange change to make because out of the two of them, who's more likely to pop up with a goal? It, it's going to be Connor, mm-hmm. isn't it? So that felt a, str- a strange substitution. I felt like, well, why didn't he just put Hogan on and go two up front for stoppage time? I really thought we were going to have a go with all that stoppage time and it never really m- materialised. But I think he's got this. And I remember Stu, the Brentford fan who I did the video with from Soccer AM, saying this to me. He's got his system. That's his, that's his formation. Because when Hogan's come on in the past, Tammy's gone out mm. to the wing. So he's obviously got this 4 3 3 of sorts and he's going to stick to it come, ra- come rain or shine that, that's his formation so yeah so you've got you're the, not going to what people are saying about why not try our guys is a 10 I don't think it's going to happen you've got Picnic and Jordan O'Brien saying should we change formation move to four midfielders potentially play Tammy and uh, Hogan or someone else with Hogan potentially future coming up you don't see that as a possibility the other thing with that is it's not really scoring goals that's been the problem mm. and if you're taking another man out the midfield and playing with a two-man midfield that leaves you likely to be overrun I would say and also if you change your system like we're we're talking about Jack Grealish at this point Dean Smith said that he probably will have at least another month on the sidelines but if he is to come back at the start of February optimistically then you've changed your system and that's a whole well he could play as a 10 couldn't he well yeah but you, you want Jack to be playing like he was at the start of the season don't you you want him to be the the He's more of an eight now, isn't he? So the four three three actually. That midfield of Horahan, Grealish and McGinn was working well. Mm. Even again, even in the big games, we'd gone to Middlesbrough and won three 0 We'd gone to Derby and won three 0 with with that midfield. Yeah, we weren't, weren't. We didn't concede goals then. So you can't you can't now tell me that that midfield's not going to work because we're playing good teams there as well. It just for whatever reason the three yesterday it, it just didn't work. I don't think Bjarnason looks fit. Mm. Connor and McGinn didn't have the best games. I mean, the whole team was subpar. Yeah. The whole team. When you're all not playing well, everyone's going to look bad. The interesting chat about fi- fixture congestion. Michael Jacobs, how much do you think the poor QPR and Preston performances are down to fixture congestion and tiredness over busy Christmas schedules with a thin squad? That's all well and good, and that's a fair point, but everybody has this fixture congestion. It's yeah. not just Villa. And yeah, everyone has injuries as well. That's fair. I mean, we played Preston. They had 10 11 injuries, didn't they? Yeah. Um, they... they managed to get a, what they would class as a good result against us, a 1-1 from behind. They'd be happy with that result. They've got 10-11 injuries. Their squad's going to be a lot thinner than ours. I think I, I saw would suggest. West Ham played Southampton over Christmas and they didn't even field a full bench. Yeah, I think I saw that on the Sky Sports News ticker. Yeah. I was confused because the subs didn't look right because there wasn't enough of them. <laughs> yeah, and so everyone's struggling with injuries. Yeah. So it's not like Villa are, are being uh, hindered solely, you know? No, we- Defensively, we've been hindered because we haven't had the numbers to begin with. Sure. So if you then get injuries as well, that's a problem. But other areas of the pitch, you'd say this, we've got the, we should have the depth. Mm. But then I, look, I do look at that and think, well, Horan and McGinn have played every game over Christmas, so have we got the depth? Uh, we, yeah, we should have the depth because Jednak, I think, is now technically available. It's just whether... It's just not a great reply. It's not a like for like, It's is not it? a like for like, but if, if McGinn's knackered... Then, and he looks tired. Then you have to play your the players that are going to give you the best chance to win. I think if Smith thinks that a knackered McGinn is still better than Yedinak, then Yedinak has to go in January. I mean, as I've mentioned earlier, I'm obviously, I was hungover yesterday. Mm. But I felt like I couldn't work out who was, obviously McGinn wasn't, but out of Connor and uh, Bjarnason, I couldn't work out which one was supposed to be the deep midfielder. I don't know whether they kept interchanging and that was what threw me. Mm. But they, what, up until the late stages, they just weren't getting in. What, I would expect to see one of them in the box. And I, w- I wasn't seeing that. Yeah. So it's quite weird. I mean, the guy, Lee, Lee, who sits next to me, he'll attest to this. When Al Ghazi put that cross in for the second oh, goal, yeah. I was up going, there's only one person in the box. <laughs> and then Tammy obviously goes, <laughs> goes, and, goes, and, goes and knocks it in. He was laugh- laughing away, obviously, and my yeah. dad was laughing as well. But I just didn't, it did seem too many times to only be Tammy in the box. Every now and again, but Blassie, when he was on, would pop up yeah. at, the, at the back stick. But... I thought we were all about... McGinn and Connor have both scored headers this season yeah. since Smith's been in from getting in the box. and 
McGinn definitely wasn't getting in the box, and he would be the one who out who wouldn't have been playing deep. And and Smith is has talked about Hurahan being the quarterback, hasn't he, of of this midfield, and yeah, so he sure. wants him to be more deep lying. Yeah, but yeah, I get we, that. We we need the players in the box because. It wouldn't be fair for us to sit here and say, oh, Smith's got it all right, when we criticised Bruce for not pe- putting people in the box, when we were aiming crosses in and there was absolutely nobody there. Yeah, you know, yeah. and Tammy Abraham... Was, oh, thank was, God for him. Yeah, yeah absolutely, because he's, he's bailed us out. An interesting one, Daryl Barber. How do you think Smith's decision of bringing on Whelan for Hurrihan would have been received if it was Bruce in oh, the dugout? And I said that to my dad. I said, totally. not that I'm criticising Smith, because I, I think he's very, very clever. Yeah. If Bruce had done that, he'd have got panned. But like, Horahan's tired, I suppose, and he doesn't want to deviate from the system. Whelan's the only central midfielder on the bench. Totally. But, but Bjarnason's not looked fit to me any time he's been on the pitch around Christmas. Right. He's just not looked right. Yeah. He's a good player. Um, this uh, Daryl Barber continues, first bit of criticism of Smith for me is how he's handled the Grealish injury. Need to change the system, not just replace with inferior players. Well, that's the, the problem is, is that, as I've said, there isn't a light-for-light light replacement mm. for Grealish. People will say Callum O'Hare, but you wouldn't play Callum O'Hare as a central midfielder. He's a, he's a number 10, and we're not playing with a number 10. Mm. So he just isn't a like-for-like. Like. Last season, we had Onoma. And Grealish didn't play, we had Onoma, who could do the things that, maybe not as well, but he could do the things that Grealish could do. He could, he could carry the ball. He's quite a tricky player. We just have, we haven't got anyone. I like the comparison of, of well, the uh, aligning Jack Grealish to a number 8, because to me, I've always kind of compared him to Gascoigne, who was a, who was a number 8, and... Or an eighteen as well, I think. Anyway, he he was he was that eight. Good squad numbers knowledge. We bet you for that. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's Good see. Fun for let's that see one, if I get it right. Um, and anyway, you Gas- are right. Eighteen at Everton. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, and anyway, Gascoigne is the type of player that I would most like him to, and and that's the role he wants to play, isn't it? Um, that number eight. That's all. That's all the point. If you asked him himself, he'd say I'm an eight. Yeah. He wouldn't say he was a ten. Uh, anything else to talk about on the? Uh, on the QPR game because we've got a lot to get to and it's we're for 45 minutes flown in. by in the rubbish booth yeah uh, and he swore again then um, just that I, I said it on in my tweets after the game it's the first time I've under under Smith where I've really walked away and been disappointed by what I've seen mm. after, what did Smith say after the game have you got that in your, your 100 pages of notes uh, if you haven't that's a disgrace with the amount of notes you've got let's have a look and why have you got so many notes because all the stuff in there is not going to get used well yeah most of it's got used there's about 10 pages there uh, it's 5 pages and one of them is the uh, double sided I get the old uh, no oh, yeah. okay. single sided you see sorry not great sustainability from me uh, what did he say after the game don't think I got it not, Come on, Tom. Lie to you. Yeah, I wish people could say these notes. They're ridiculous. They're great. I'm not saying they're bad, but there's just so much on there. All they need is a bit of <laughs> colour coordination. Just notice that you've got an any other business section. Because well, <laughs> sometimes there's questions, and I don't know where they fit, so I just put them in the end. Any other business? Any other business. That is peaked. That's the second time I've used the term peak Tom Julian tonight. <laughs> the worst thing is I didn't bold it. I should have bowled in it. Yeah, you've bowled all your other yeah. subheading, so that's, that's um, poor. Anyway, don't I don't know what Smith said. Right. I, I read his I read his transcript transcript, um, and I think it was it was frustration. Did he say he wouldn't have said replied well? Uh, I, Did I he, he wouldn't have thought we deserved to win? I wouldn't think. I don't remember him saying anything like. That. I think he I think he praised the people that came in like Elphick and um, Steer, and uh, he he was drawn on Tammy Abraham fairly early. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. And he talked about Grealish as well. There wasn't a huge amount. I, I, I certainly didn't read I just, it. As I've said QBR t- twice already, I just didn't think we did anything well. I didn't walk away from that thinking, well, at least that was positive today. No standout players for you. No, you picked Tammy on the basis. He scored two goals, but when you're the front man, you're half, half relying on service. And yeah. he, I wouldn't say he got great service yesterday. Well, let's have a quick look at the championship table then. No, I don't want to. Um, some some interesting results. The uh, Nottingham Forest beat Leeds 4-2. Which they've I thought, won the last couple. Forest won the last couple now. Fun. Yes, I think they have. They're on the upward swing. No, they haven't. <laughs> You've even got it on your notes that they oh, haven't. Where? You've got the form there. Where? There. Oh, Nottingham Forest, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, it's your notes. They've been very up and down, I thought, actually. I, for some reason, those Leeds have lost two in a row. That's what I'm thinking of. Leeds have lost two in a row. They're falling off. Mm. Um, 
Norwich had lost and drawn over Christmas. Yeah, that derby game looked ridiculous. This is the most annoying thing, I think. I think this is where the frustration bore from, that we could have capitalised. West Brom lost as well, didn't they? Yeah, we could be four points better than we are right now, potentially. Obviously, things don't work like that. No. But we'd be above QPR because they would have dropped the points as well. It's just very frustrating. So Leeds are currently top 51 points and Norwich second on 49. Then Sheffield United, West Brom, Middlesbrough and Derby make up the playoff positions. Villa down in 10th on 38 points, uh, five points off the playoffs. That's right what I'm now. saying about QPR yesterday. If they'd have showed some ambition, they'd have won that game yesterday. Mm. They've won two more games than us this season, looking at your league table there. They're ahead of us in the league. Try and win the game. They're just satisfied with the point. So I keep saying to Dean Spencer, but he's not taking the bait. What did Dean Spencer think of the game? He's, as a QPR fan, was happy that they got a point, which I find strange when they were 2-1 up. Mm. I find that really strange. Did they beat us last year at Villa Park? Yeah, 3-1. Yeah, I thought they did, yeah. And they beat us at Loftus Road earlier in the season. Yeah, that was garbage, wasn't it? I mean, I don't think they did themselves any favours with the time wasting, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I don't think it helped them. But McLaren said, McLaren, the way McLaren described the game afterwards, I felt like he'd been at a different game to me. Really? He described it as a really good advert for the championship. What, what part of that was a good advert for the championship? <laughs> it was ugly. But McLaren's an ugly manager, isn't he? He kind of fits into the, uh, the old-fashioned uh, manager that we were trying to get away with, uh, away from. I mean, they started off terribly, QPR. So they did, yeah. He's obviously got something about him because he, he's got something out of them. Well, he saved his job, didn't he? Because I think, the, was it just before we played them or... They were on a run of seven unbeaten or something around the time that we played yeah. them. And just before that, I'm sure he was he was basically a game away from losing his job. And then they went on this mad run and now they're competing for the playoffs. I mean, I might be being disrespectful here, but I can't imagine him commanding any respect. No, I mean, when I was a young football fan, Steve McLaren was like the the next golden I'm sure he was the next Ferguson wasn't he well he was he, assistant at Man U assistant at Man U but everyone was kind of like oh where's, for, uh, where's uh, McLaren going to go he's going to be the England manager going to do all these well, amazing he, things to be fair that happened and then he was the Wally with the Brolly wasn't he oh, in England yeah, yeah. and uh, it just got less and less fashionable and he had that silly fun. Dutch voice as well when he got the Twente was job good, wasn't it he won Steve. the league didn't he hey, Steve. he won the league with Twente yeah, yeah the... he got the job at Wolfsburg he's been around the block he's managed a lot of teams yeah interesting interesting career right let's move on because we can't talk about the Steve McLaren no comings and goings all night um, let's talk about transfers linked with Wolves defender Courtney House uh, weird one I've in done my, my I've done my research on Courtney actually what have you got well, I've got to get it because I've, I've I've done the research, but they're not prepped. So he's a 23-year-old left-footed centre back, six foot two and a half. Um, <laughs> the half's very important. Only played four games last year and only appeared once in the League Cup this season. So hasn't had a huge amount of game time. Um, uh, to me, it seems a funny one. Obviously, I haven't seen very much of him at all. There's a guy called Ryan Lester who blogs for the Birmingham Mail on Wolves. Yeah. Um, said he is, he's a defender that likes to play out from the back. So as doesn't fit in with what I've been told, but okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Who, what, did, what, what did you hear? My Wolves mate, whose opinion I actually really respect, he knows a lot about football, said he's a talent, was a regular fixture for the England under-21s a while back, quick, powerful and strong. And I said, good on the ball, question mark. He said, decent. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say like good. His downfall here was was Bolly. Nothing nothing he did wrong. Yeah. But well, Bolly came in and he's a good defender. So that's why he's not in the team. Interesting. Interesting. I, I was going to say before you poo pooed on my point that that to have somebody that could play the ball out would be the the guy that would replace Twan Zabi. It'd be interesting to see what it's like. But it's been a very mixed response, mainly from Villa fans because we don't know what to expect. We haven't seen. Seems actually. a bit of a no brainer to me. To be honest, he's. He's a young, he's a young, young lad, so he'd be coachable. Mm-hmm. Dean Smith likes that term, doesn't he? People yeah. being coachable. He's left-footed, so straight away to me that says Ch- him and Chester are going to play together. I, I believe Chester would get picked ahead of Elphick. Yeah. Chester goes to right-hand side of centre back where he's more comfortable. You've got a natural left-footer at left centre back, which offers more balance. So that to me ticks a lot of boxes. He's quite a powerhouse, so he does things that Chester can't can't do. So he'll be the one winning the headers. Go out and win the he's ball. quick. He's he's athletic. I think Max is cheap. We've, I think so, Max he's played in the championship before. I think it just makes sense. Since we lost John Terry, we've missed somebody that goes and wins the first header, haven't we? Well, that's why Bruce played. He had in that there. Yeah. It was purely because of that, wasn't it? AVFC underscore views. If we were to sign Courtney House this week, could you see us switching to three at the back and playing win backs? I don't know. Would that suit Elmer Hammerdy better? Yeah, I think I think it would, but you'd have to, it wouldn't suit Neil Taylor. 
at left back. It definitely wouldn't suit Hutton playing as an out and out left yeah. wing back if he was the one playing on the left hand side. I just think Smith, as, as I said earlier, Smith likes the four three three. I don't see him deviating away from that. Scott Machin, would you guys take Ashley Cole on a free until the end of the transfer window? I've seen him like. I'd rather we sign someone to be younger. So would I. But I've seen him for the Galaxy. He's captain. Uh, galaxy, isn't he? And I don't know. I don't watch much America. You're, you're the American man. You've got that angle covered. Yeah, but he's a soccer guy. He, he he loves like being capped. Like he's all in on Twitter and he's going big guns for it. And and he's been quite vocal and quite a good leader. Um, he's he's one of the best left backs of my generation. I would say. Yeah, it'd like. be interesting to see him. But I think the wages and the fact that we could probably get somebody better and younger for less means that actually it would be a signing for for the wrong reasons. We're much more likely to sign Barbe or Rico Henry from Brentford, mm. I, w- I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. Uh, Fair enough. He's how old is Ashley Cole now? He's older than me. He must be 35. Yeah, I'd say he's older than that. Would you? I, d- I don't know. I mean, don't risk it by going on Google on this computer. No. But he's, he must be, th- I'd, I'd say about 36, 37. We could, the whole thing could fall apart. Exactly. Uh, Scott Edwards, with new faces of certainty, do you think there will be any surprise outgoings to comply with FFP? We just have too many that can't play Smith's way, unfortunately. I wouldn't say that we have anyone to sell that would really benefit us no. financially. Well, the only one that would bring in massive money would be Grealish. Yeah. We're not going to sell him. I'm not... The people that aren't playing, I'm not sure how sellable they are, mm. how much money you'd get. You'd have to be taking a hit up a percentage of their wages. Mm. I would suggest... So I think Yednak might go. He's on 40-ish grand a week, mm. Yednak, if, if the sums that we see in the papers are, are correct. He's the one who doesn't really fit into what Smith's trying to do. Does he? he's, more, he's, a, yeah. he's a Steve Bruce player. He does what Steve Bruce wants. Yeah. He would have played most weeks under Bruce. We have, I know he's been injured, but we, I don't think we'll see him under Smith. It would make sense that he went back to Australia. Yeah. I would say he's the only one I can really. Whelan's played more than. Obviously, we had injuries, but Whelan's played more than I thought he would mm. under Dean Smith. As well, I mean, I like Wheeler. Let me just say that I, I like Wheeler. I think he's got a lot to offer, but I didn't think he'd play as much as he has done under Smith. Yeah, Yednak feels like the only one that's really expendable at this stage. I don't think it I saves don't think, you on wages as well. And I don't think um, Whelan is expendable. Not at the moment, stage. he's not. No, um, Elmer Hamley might be another one with Bruce going to Sheffield Wednesday. There's a potential there. I was, I was actually thinking about Hutton, who almost joined Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. at the start of last, uh, the start of this season just gone um, whether he would if, if Bruce put in I don't know 500k or something like that whether that would be enough to for Hutton to go I don't know what the Sheffield Wednesday fullback situation is to yeah, be able to say whether they, whether they need anything if I'm being honest I said earlier on Twitter Bruce bought a lot of players and then didn't play them yeah Lansbury Hogan he di- didn't seem to know what to do yeah when, when he bought them so I don't I don't imagine they'll have millions of pounds to spend I don't imagine they'll be, he'll be coming to Villa he's got Onomer hasn't he Onoma will be thrilled, I'm sure. <laughs> well, at least Onoma played under Bruce. Only for the first half of the season, though. He well, didn't that, really well, get that, any but then, football. But then Grealish comes back, and it's it's hard to play on both, isn't it? Yeah, but when I think he did play, play left wing, though, didn't he? He'll play under Bruce. I suppose he knows him. You're more you're more inclined to pick someone that you know, yeah, over an unknown entity. And for all Bruce's faults, he seems like a guy, an amicable guy. Generally. He's a decent fit for Sheffield Wednesday, I'd say. Yeah, they, that made the notes actually. Did it? Yeah, Bruce joined Sheffield. I Wednesday. mean, that made the notes along with everything else that's ever happened <laughs> that's unfair but Steve Agnew and Stephen Clements join the start they're taking well. charge aren't they're they Bruce hasn't started Bruce doesn't start till February the 1st which seems odd I felt like that was a bit it's obviously for personal reasons a prior commitment I mean God knows what that commitment is yeah I don't I know. a month speculate. long commitment yeah it's the same it's, it feels like it's a holiday sure right let's get to the biggest news I've not finished my Steve Bruce point oh I just no, no, well, I've forgotten it again now because you've interrupted me <laughs> what else did you have to say you said I don't know what that could oh, be I've got it I've got it I was going to say that like maybe they didn't trust him to do the transfer business, so they didn't want him until February the first when the window shut. That would be the stupidest. It's a terrible reason. point, really. I've made a big deal out of it. it yeah. ter- I thought it was a little bit funner. No, yeah, I mean, if that is the reason, then it it's won't be the absolutely reason. awful. It's obviously not, it's obviously not going to be the reason, Tom. But well, then I just don't thought, bring it up. It's a funny little remark. Right. Someone has to bring the humour. Tom, but Julian. I will say that someone came up to me at Villa Park yesterday and was like, "I, I love the podcast. Your mate that does the podcast with you is so funny." I was thinking, well, neither of them are particularly funny. <laughs> maybe, maybe Dolan on on occasion. And I was like, Tom. He's like, yeah, Tom. Like, there was just no possibility this guy could remember your name. Why? Why is that? Like, because that's happened on multiple occasions, <laughs> and I don't want to make a thing out of it. Yeah, but I, do. I um, 
I, I mean, Tom and Dan. There's, Dan it's and Tom. It's Dan and Tom. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, probably. D's before T as well in the alphabet. Yeah, that's true. You, you, you lead on all counts. Thanks, mate. Uh, right, let's talk about the biggest news of today. Uh, We're already an hour in. Yeah, I... Let's just not talk about Tammy. Blimey, yeah. Tammy I'm Abraham. So, yeah, and that's it from the Villa View <laughs> podcast. Uh, Tammy Abraham linked with Wolves £18 million, according to Alan Nixon of The Sun. Pretty um, reliable, he is. Pretty reliable. Yeah, we are nervous that this is probably true. Um, I don't know what I think. Okay, I've gone through contrasting emotions all day. I've been doing a bit of digging, but then I'm hearing different things from my digging and they're all pretty reliable sources, so it's it's almost like no one really knows. Yeah, Matt Law from The Telegraph then came out and said that Chelsea haven't accepted an offer yet, so to hold your horses on that one. So, But, I don't know, the, the, the silence... The silence, I think, speaks quite a lot. I mean, surely Villa would... Oh, I don't know. It's not Villa's place to come out and say. No, they, no Villa they should might keep quiet. Villa should, well, they probably don't know. From Villa's point of view, obviously, they just want him to stay. They've paid... Villa have paid a fee. Yeah. That he, I, I'd expect, from a gentlemanly point of view, that that gets, that gets seen out. I suppose it depends what the player wants as well. But then just before we came in here, I saw something that said, well, actually, Tammy played for the under-23s. So that counts as playing for two clubs in this season. So... He can only play for Chelsea or Villa. Chelsea aren't going to call him back to play him. No, sorry, 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 said, sorry that. said that. Yeah. So, if that's the case, and he can only really play at Villa, mm. he'd be. I, t- part, I was thinking about this yesterday before this news all broke. We've had this thing about getting to twenty goals and breaking Peter with record. And obviously, Tammy's going to do it if he stays at Villa and he, and he stays stays fit. We should be cursed with it. Imagine if he got taken away just as he's about to break that break that record. Do you think that? plays any part in Tammy's head no no I wouldn't think so t- because he's going to smash it if he stays for the second half of the season he's going to absolutely smash it he's on t- on target for 30 goals 30 league goals which is incredible and considering he didn't join us for the first month until after the first month of the it's season totally, as well yeah. he's got an incredible record he's been devastating yeah he's, top goal scorer in the he's, he's missed a few chances yeah. as well Tam, he's very prolific but he has missed as all strikers do mm. A few chances, but he'd be a, such a huge loss. I've seen a few people saying, "Oh, Codger and Hogan can cover it if Tammy Tammy goes out." I personally don't think, don't like Codger as a lone forward. I prefer him out wide. I don't think he does some of the things that lone forwards should do. So I instantly, to me, I prefer him as as a wide player. Hogan, he scored a lot of headers, hasn't he, Tammy? Yeah. As I say, we put a lot of crosses in the box. Hogan's a completely different player and someone that Smith's got a tune out of before, admittedly, but the different types of players. To, to lose Tammy would be unthinkable. Wayne Brown uh, says, how much would you pay to sign Tammy in this transfer window? I'm going to rephrase that a little bit. So the the money is rumoured at 18 million. That's cheap as well. That seems very cheap. What would you value Tammy Abraham at? Because he's obviously got... He's got Great pedigree, Bristol City, and now at Villa. Obviously, had that down spell at Swansea in a terrible side. Where yeah. do you put his value as a twenty-year-old English? So your your value automatically goes up. He's played for England totally. again. You it goes up, doesn't it? Uh, I'd, I'd have thought at least twenty-five. Yeah, I was going to say double double eighteen. Yeah, at least twenty-five. Like you just seen Pulisic go for fifty-six million to Chelsea. I mean, he's a good player. He's only played eleven games this season. He's a good player, and five of those are starts. Yeah, that's because Jadon Sancho has been so. In such but if you form. if you're not good enough to get in the the, the the first team, you're worth sixty million. That seems incredible. Yeah, then different me. players suit different he's twenty-three different well. teams. Pulisic might suit Chelsea's needs more than Dortmund's at the moment. Although I don't see that myself, 60 but I'm just sixty million for a non-starting. Midfield player that that seems crazy. But he's playing for he's in Dor- at Dortmund or a good side. He's young. Again, he's use that Dean Smith term. He's, he's coachable. I'd be very upset if Tammy went. Very very upset to to bring it back yeah. t- towards Tammy Abraham. I just don't I don't know what's going to happen. As I say, I'm hearing different different things, so I'm not not certain about what's going to happen. But if that ruling's true, then he'll be at Villa because he isn't going. The only reason he's going to Chelsea is to be loaned elsewhere. Or be or be sold. Yeah, sure. I always I always come back to these crazy rules and think like wolves must know that. If 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 I don't know, but people do know the rules. Yeah, it feels like people don't. 
Man, as I've said, I'm sure George Mendes has got some way around it. Yeah, that's true. So that's poor, the, poor guy Mendes. That's, <laughs> <you call him. laughs> that's thank you for bringing that one up. That's, Every time I see his name, I think, oh, there's poor guy, poor guy Mendes, poor guy Mendes. That's how they say it. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. That kind of ends the Tammy Abraham segment. Do uh, do we know anything? Not right now. Essentially, I think by the time you listen to this, then it'll then, changed again. Th- th- it'll all have changed again. Yeah. Oh, I think he should stay. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Villa fan. I think he should finish what he started. Yeah. I think I think he should stay. He's going to break. I mean, I don't know what the championship goal, top goal scoring record is. He must be in with the shout of uh, breaking it. Well, Billy Sharp scored the same amount of goals as him. 16 goals, Billy yeah. Billy Sharp, man, what's he now? Billy Sharp. I always like seeing Billy Sharp on the score sheet, unless it's against Villa. Um, he did score against us as well, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. He's... I mean, he's a, he seems like a nice guy. Most people Sharp. did for Sheffield United. Yeah, that's they, really, they felt like. They could have, could have uh, lined up and tucked him away. Right, we're through to any other business unless you've got anything else to say. <laughs> not, that, not that I can think of, Thomas. Um, Adam, an hour and four minutes. Yeah, I'm only going to touch on a couple of things. Adam Wright, did you see this on, on Twitter? He said, I mm. never want to see uh, Gary Gardner in a Villa shirt again, but like it or not, Blues are no longer just a rival, but also a competitor for a playoff spot. Why are we helping them? Call him back and farm him off to a League One club to weaken them. Makes no sense in helping them. Discuss. <laughs> He'd, again, he'll want to stay there, won't he? Because he's playing, he comes back to Villa, he gets nowhere near the first team. I don't reckon we can call him back. There's no way Villa would have put a clause in like that because he was unwanted. There's no way we'd have put in a clause to to call him back. I think I looked this up last week. I thought we couldn't call him back. And I, I don't think we can call him back, yeah. But and what? But some people ask the question, why did we ever loan him there in the first place? Because there's no way that we thought that Little Birmingham City would be competitors for top six. Which is arrogance yeah. on our part. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe. It'd be, would you have said it? I wouldn't have. No, I wouldn't have. I'd have said, that, <laughs> yeah, I'd have said they're right. more likely to go bust than get in the top, top six. I, I had them down as relegation candidates. Mm. Amongst them, unbelievable there. But then... Again, it shows how quickly football changes because at the start of the season, Villa were in that same situation and and things change. So I mean, is there still a chance they can have some points deducted? I thought there was. They must be... They are still... They'll be reviewed with financial fair so play in February, March, March time. Yeah. Mm. So, I, I don't I know. know. But I then, know which way I want that review to go. But, but then it doesn't usually kick in until the next season or no, something like it? that, does it? I, I feel like it takes forever. And then they'll appeal and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, Daniel Delaney, kids for the cup to give the seniors a break. I mean, I got hammered in various parts of Twitter last season for saying that oh, I didn't care about the FA Cup. I think Dean Smith said we'll take it seriously, hasn't he? But I just think realistically we're not going to win the FA Cup and people need a rest. So I'm sure Swansea will rest players. Like, mm. I don't personally see... I'd love to. I'd love to win a cup. But I don't see any world in which we win the FA Cup. Mm. So in that, with that in mind, I'd write it off. Yeah. If I was the manager, that's what I'd do. I think. But I get why people are upset with that because I love the FA Cup. It's great, and I don't like to disrespect it. But I don't. I just don't think we need it. We definitely don't need it right now when we're when we're absolutely blowing and we need to take the opportunities to rest our our best and and most crucial players. We need to take that opportunity. I think that the FA Cup has to has to take the to to fall on the sword as it it's were a, it's a good game to bed in Kalinic maybe a good we've just called Suleiman back a few young players yeah. Chester needs taken out because he's got a knee injury so it's no, not worth risking it there he's been playing through the pain barrier for months so he's automatically one that comes out there's a number of players who we've mentioned who look tired I mean to be fair is it it's not much of a gap between the games either is it so mm. I just think we don't need it yeah uh, I wanted to finish on Sunderland till I die. I'm really sorry. Somebody asked this question. I haven't put their name oh, on notes. my notes. Um, notes. Sunderland till I die has been really popular. Would you like to see Villa make something like this? Are more clubs going to do this now? We touched on this last week, didn't we? Um, about how I'd like to see like dressing room cameras, changing room cameras. You see it every now and again on FA Cup games when there's like it's lower league teams, yeah. like the early rounds on BT Sport. You see it every now and again. I don't think it'll ever catch on there. No. Would you want Villa to do a, a Sunderland Till I Die type show? It depends. Cause I'll, I mean, you, have you finished it? I'm on episode six. So I've, I've done the first four. And it's weird because like Coleman comes in and it feels like there's some positivity there, but you know exactly what happens. You know they get they get relegated. So it's a spoiler there for anyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because like, they're all saying he's the right man. Look at how he's come in and done this on the episode I've just watched. And then, obviously, you know that it all hits the fan. But a behind-the-scenes Access All Areas documentary just shows how much stuff, for want of a better word, Coleman had to 
come in and deal with. And uh, uh, who's the guy that started? I still can't believe Coleman Simon took Grayson. that. I still cannot believe Coleman took that job. So it's an absolute tyre fire, Sunderland AFC. And Simon Grayson comes in, and to be fair to him, does his best with an absolute shower of players <laughs> that are terrible. And the first episode's amazing because Darren Gibson immediately goes gets absolutely smashed, doesn't he? Yeah. And slags off all his teammates. And it's like, what are you supposed to do? You know that this is going to be an absolute mess from the start. And we we were saying Sunderland look terrible and Villa could have been that Sunderland. There's no doubt we could have been. But I'm in real two minds because if you if that's what I'm going to see from Villa, which over the last five years easily could have been what you see then I don't want to I don't want to see that no nor me um, so but the the other side of me I'm, I love watching Sunderland because I'm detached from it and I'd be really interested to see what Villa's like but I'm not sure I want to see it one thing I did want to bring up was I mentioned this to you and you're not at this episode yet but in the transfer episode Lewis Graben basically says he doesn't want to play for for Sunderland my dad said same as you Graben doesn't come off well in it I don't think he comes off well my dad's finished it by the way right okay so Graben basically says and this isn't too much of a spoiler but he basically says I'm coming off all the time we're losing games why am I coming off I don't want to be here essentially he scored a lot of goals in the episodes I've watched obviously he was doing well at the time he was the only one that was scoring goals so the question should be asked why was he being the one taken off and he's probably got a point there but like his total lack of team spirit or all about him wanting to fight for the team and I get that some players are selfish and they're great because they're so driven they're so yeah in, insular but he just comes off as this like oh, I'm not going to say anything bad about the club but I don't want to be here essentially and it's just like oh and then he signs for Villa and it's and we love Grab and I was really excited because I was I knew we how, don't love him now I, I knew how good he was and now he's banging goals for Nottingham Forest he's obviously effective but it just kind of takes a shine off a player that I thought I was quite happy with at Villa. And again, he didn't have the best time under Bruce towards the end of the season, struggling to score goals. It, it, it's just a, a little bit of an uncomfortable watch when he becomes your player. On the other side of that, you see Mark Bunn sign for Sunderland and now you see him at... Um, see Mark him, Bunn? Uh, not Mark Bunn. Uh, Mark Bunn on the brain, mate. Uh, <laughs> who's the Birmingham goalkeeper? Now, current Birmingham yeah. goalkeeper, Lee Camp. Lee Camp. Has he signed for them? Lee Camp signs for there. Sunderland. Sunderland have an absolute... I mean, the first Nightmare. goalkeeper, his confidence is broken in the first pre-season friendly. Jason Steele. Yeah, and now he's at, I think he's at, uh, is he at Brighton or is that a different Steele? Uh, not sure. Uh, oh. But anyway, Jason Steele gets an offer from Derby. Is it Luke Steele? I don't know. Oh, well, we've been someone Steele. <laughs> <Luke>, uh, <laughs> Terrible end to the podcast. Jason, Jason Steele gets an offer to go, f- this is just a conversation. I've not watched it. This, yeah, this shouldn't be on the podcast. <laughs> Jason Steele gets an offer to go from t- from Sunderland to Derby, and he's like, yes, I'm out of here. Then that falls through, and he has to go back to His Sunderland. His confidence was on the floor after that Celtic game. The other, the, the Dutch goalkeeper, like, demolishes a finger and he's out for a couple of months so they bring in Lee Camp and Lee Camp has an absolute shocker oh, Lee Camp's a strange goalkeeper yeah oh, really? the whole the whole thing is sound about people not looking like they should be in a position Lee Camp doesn't look like yeah, a goalkeeper to agreed. me he look tall enough a good career to be fair to him well yeah I mean the end of the day, they're sitting where are they sitting 7th yeah. Birmingham they're sitting higher in the league probably conceded less goals than we have so what do I know there's a good video of him from yesterday Save. or last week oh, where he just says that the I've, ball's here and he makes a I've, proper dive I've seen it. it I mean they're both in the Blues fans are mad on him to be honest Very from fun. what I've heard they're not mad on him no this no. is Sunderland were like all the Sunderland fans were like oh Lee Camp we've heard of him great at least he's in <laughs> he's probably decent at football manager at some point <laughs> yeah and then the Tom like, Julian way of judging a player <laughs> <laughs> two games in they're like oh Lee Camp I can't believe it man good impression yeah, yeah not well bad, huh? it got better as the impression yeah, it was went good, that was. right there we go Sunderland till I die. Watch it if you can because it's it's very interesting on Netflix. If you have it, I mean, you've spoiled it for everyone now. You've you've gone <laughs> ahead like and a, seen things that I haven't watched. That's now. like a ten minute section. I'll be interested. I said this to you the other day. I'd be interested to see your thoughts on grabbing, but interesting that your dad shares my views. Well, I said this is what Tom said, and my dad just went, "Yes, yeah, sir." So, <laughs> okay, basically, nice. Yeah. You do the outro. All right. Thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. If you do enjoy the channel, make sure you turn your subscription things on with your post notifications and all that. I mean, they're the same thing, but okay. Yeah, but make sure it's all on. Just check it. Even if you do have them, make sure you check them and and everything's still working okay. Make sure you watch the fan cams from yesterday, uh, New Year's Day. Uh, As Dan says, new crop of people. So some new opinions and and let us know what you think. If you've been watching Sunderland Till I Die, would you be interested (laughs) 
in Leave a, it now, Tom. Would you be interested in an Aston Villa <laughs> till I die? Are you acting like there's anything we can do to influence that and there isn't? Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm just interested in what people think. Okay. It's a Villa channel, mate. Right, it's for man. the fans. Well, people are starting to think it's a Sunderland it's, channel now. It's not <laughs> good job you've got that Villa shirt on, to be fair. It's not all about you. Um, thank you so much for watching, subscribing. Leave us an, a review on iTunes if that's the way you consume this podcast. Can I interrupt you? Yeah, go on. Talking of reviews, yeah. Rollo's currently putting together a video of a review of 2018 with the Villa View kind of entwined into that because obviously the Villa View turned three years old recently so having a look back at some stuff so hopefully I've not seen it myself yet but I imagine if Rollo's putting together it'll be good I can't believe this is a 75 minute podcast so thank you if you've made it all the way to the end we appreciate you if it has been too long ah well it's free so you, you could have turned off at any point I mean you're doing this right now and I'm imagining that Rollo will cut the Sunderland bit and just cut your outro no way I the would Sunderland bit's the best bit okay alright well thank that. you so much for watching um, if you're going to the Swansea game enjoy and they'll sure there'll be a preview for that yep all right up the villa up the villa if you enjoyed that video why not watch another click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left easy pleaser.